Because I would equally condemn that like anyone else here. This is, oh, that would be abhorrent, but we haven't seen any evidence. All we hear it's is, there, is, it happens is, on is the rumors. It's, it's not rumors, it's there. Yeah, the evidence here is crystal clear. Then show the video. Well, we haven't I'd got like it to now, see but the it's video. You can Google it. Ray Taylor Man Cook. Do you want to counter that? Hello, hope you are feeling good. Today we are yet again with another video titled It's not Islamophobic to state horrific fact about men in UK Muslim belief and on British values. Wow. I believe this is going to be a very educative one. Let's start with the video. Go. To debate Nigel's explosive interview as the media commentator Rafe Hadelmanku and also Abdullah Al Andalusi, the co founder of the Muslim Debate Initiative. Let's start with you, um, Ab Abdullah. So, um, the cat's been put amongst the pigeons once again by Nigel Farage. A lot of people saying um, his comments were horribly Islamophobic and racist. Would you agree with that? I would say that uh, many people have described what he said as uh, race baiting or re religious baiting. Um, because most people who are Muslim in this country um, were from immigrant background, recent immigrant backgrounds, and so they are a convenient target. 150 years ago, uh, Oswald Mosley and Nigel Farage of his time, one might argue, um, from the British Union of Fascists, argued that Jews were a problem in this country and that there was a large population who weren't assimilating or didn't follow British values. So here we are uh, in somewhat repeating history uh, again with this. And the, one of the most dangerous things I, I noticed from Nigel Farage's comments was he was criticizing um, anti-genocide, anti-apartheid protests in Palestine. Uh, is it British values then? If, if they are the ones who are meant to be against British values, is it Nigel Farage saying that to be British is to be supporting genocide and apartheid? Well, well hang on. I think the, that's, the, that's the, very worrying. The, the, the anti-Semitism, the rise of fascism on, on British streets, it isn't coming from people like Nigel Farage. It's coming from the Islamists. Well, fascism is to, is to say that the country is more important than uh, individual rights or, or, and so on. So anyone who says that this country should come first beyond uh, people's individual rights or freedoms is by definition, or the state should come first, is by definition a fascist. Uh, so that wouldn't apply. Secondly, anti-Semitism, show one, just show one clip of someone attacking all Jews, uh, insulting Jews or inciting people to, to hate Jews in any one of these demonstrations. We all hear somebody a lot of rhetoric gas, from... Somebody said, gas the Jews. Somebody's wearing a, a Hamas sign. Children just no, dress as fancy no, dress Hamas sure, then, terrorists. Then, then, we have, then we have to sh see the video, show the video where someone said gas the Jews. Right, because I, I would equally condemn that like anyone else here. This is oh, that would be abhorrent, but we haven't seen any evidence. All we hear it's is there. It happens on, on the rumors. We it's, can, it's not rumors. It's there. Yeah, the evidence here is crystal clear. Then show the video. Well, we haven't I'd got like it to now, see but the video. Clear. You can Google it. Ray Taylor Man Cook. Do you want to counter this? Yeah, well, I mean, look, it goes without saying that the majority of Muslims in this country are well integrated and adjusted, and that should be celebrated. But people constantly say, oh, it's a small minority who are like this. It's not. It's a very sizable minority of the Muslim population of this country hold views, attitudes and beliefs that run contra completely contrary to our civilization and our culture. And it's not getting better. People used to say, oh, well, this is just first immigration Muslims. Their children and grandchildren will be very different. On the contrary, it's the children today who hold far more radical views than their parents or grandparents. I mean, you know, there was one poll done by the uh, Policy Exchange that showed this is quite unbelievable. One third of young British Muslims aged 16 to 24 believe ex-Muslims should be put to death for apostasy. This is quite amazing. A majority of British Muslims believe that homosexuality should be illegal compared to 5% of the broader population. Three quarters of British Muslims in this last poll do not believe that Hamas committed murder and rape on October the 7th. Now you might think that's a, that's a bizarre thing for them to believe, but it's actually in keeping with previous polls. 31% of British Muslims believe that America was behind 9-11. Uh, 7% believe it was the Jews, only 4% believe it was Al-Qaeda, which of course we know. More Muslims also believe that Diana was killed because she wanted to marry a Muslim than believe she was killed in an accident. Now those are just the most bizarre things. But then you go, you look further and you, and you see that 62% of Muslims want to restrict free speech in order to protect religious sensitivities. 52% believe that there should be no picture of Muhammad shown. Every gauge you look at, most scarily, 9% of British Muslims, 400,000 people identify as being Islamists and supporters of terrorism, and 15% 
sympathise with terrorism that's not, compared, that's not, that's to, not compared to six percent compared to six percent in, in in France and Germany. Let, and eighty one percent eighty one percent of British Muslims identify as Muslim first and British second, whereas it's only sixty six percent in Germany and it's only forty six percent in Fr France, we have a real issue here which we need to address and we can't keep covering these things up. Abdullah, okay. that's a barrage of data. How would you respond to that? Okay, yeah, and in this very same poll, uh, twice as many uh, of the non-Muslim public, British public that was polled, were likely to support ISIS than Muslims. That's in, that, that, polls. that's in the same poll, right? These are five so, polls. Well, we're talking you. about the one you referenced. So in this poll, you get some very weird data coming out. But th that's beside the point. The point is that uh, Muslims, if you ask uh, religious uh, Jews who have very similar laws and beliefs to Muslims, will say very much the same thing. They're going to say they're Jewish first and maybe British second. It's, it's a big, was a big debate amongst Jews uh, throughout this kind of, throughout, uh, for many decades, and there are sizable portions of Jewish people that believe that they're Jewish first, and they even have gone to the it's, Israel. Let me finish. They have, the gone, they have gone to, uh, to participate in the Israeli Defense Forces to fight as reservists for Israel, yeah, but they're not reservists in Britain. They would not fight for Britain, or they have not fought for, 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 for Britain. These very same people. Why don't you see why any complaint against their patriotism well, and their nationalism? Because I don't that's, recall, that, that's not, I don't recall Jews up, blowing so, themselves up. I don't so, recall Jews so beheading anybody. The, I don't recall Jews flying planes into buildings. So that's, I well, think, no, we're not one, about, one of the differences no, 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 that we're not, we have we're not, It's not talking about Jews here. But, but Zionists have, in the past, killed British politicians uh, throughout the Palestine, the Palestine struggles, they, they called it. They supported actual terrorism, blowing up King David Hotel. They, they supported supported and funded internationally okay, Abdul, um, terrorist operations against British if we, if we army put, in, in Israel and, you, if, and Palestine, if you we, know that. Abdul, if we pull this into the here and the now, right. rather than dredging through history, the yeah. violence on British streets, the unrest on British streets, the the fox hunting they, protests and demonstrations that led to 60 police officers hang, being hang Every Saturday yeah. in Britain, we yeah. are seeing the protests now. We're seeing soaring yeah anti-Semitism, we're seeing politicians yeah. being forced out of office, we're seeing politicians in David Amos being killed. There is a commonality amongst that. Yep. You must admit, these figures are <clears throat> damning. And I particularly want to ask you, why is it that young British Muslims seem to be especially radicalised when compared to the older Muslims? I, I find that surprising. Why is that happening? Firstly, I think that this is um, all a, a red herring. People are entitled to religious views uh, in England, what and these, 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 religious, no, these religious views um, might, might be what you might call conservative or, or ultra orthodox, uh, depending on, uh, and they will be at odds with uh, the liberal ideals of liberal Supposing values. Sharia but law that's the, is that's the, orthodox. That's the point. That's it, against the law of the but land. But not on non-Muslims, right? And then no one ever said they wanted to live by Sharia law. Jews want to live by Halakha law, Jewish law, and they even have Beit Deens, which is uh, Jewish courts uh, that resolve disputes in this country. So no one complains about. That. Well, well, at least not now. The, 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 the British Union of Fascists 150 years, uh, 20 years ago did complain about that. And of course, we're seeing history repeat itself. The issue is this. If Jews can have these things, if Jews can live in Stanford Hill, Gold is Green, and have their, uh, and have, uh, their, own, uh, their own culture, and relatively, they even have their own like a security sort of force called the Shomrim, Look. and that's not a problem. And great. And I, I support that. Okay, and then most, just, uh, why can't Muslims have the same? I want to pull this conversation out, if I could, back to Nigel Farage's comments. I know you, yeah. you put a post out about that. Extraordinary. It's been taken down. I, I put a by tweet out defending media. Nigel Farage and all I did was I provided some of the same statistics and simply for telling the truth today you get silenced because I think it's almost as if the establishment elite understand that multiculturalism has failed and that Islam is a tinderbox waiting to go off and they're treading on eggshells around it and it reminded me precisely of the last 30 years in Rotherham and Oldham when the police, the social services, the councils were petrified by political correctness and so beholden to this ideology of multiculturalism that they allowed the industrial scale rape of young British girls by Pakistani Muslims for fear of inflaming community tensions. That's why Nigel Farage and I are getting silenced for speaking the truth. We have imported vast numbers of people into this country who have no intention of assimilating. They live segregated lives in Islamic silos with, whose daily lives pass with little or no interaction God has with, the wide, silo? with wider British society. Would you? And, and they, they exist in a world that's almost like a petri Would you dish. Say Stanford One Hill? second, let me finish the silo. In these communities, they're like petri dishes where cultural, abhorrent cultural practices are being practiced, forced marriages, 
honour killings. Britain is now the global centre of acid attacks. We've already spoken about the grooming gangs that are taking place. These are abhorrent practices. We know full well that Muslims living in these communities are twice as likely to be as extremists as those living in non-segregated communities. And we're only making this worse by continuing okay. mass immigration. Final word to you, Abdul. Uh, I want to try and get you to respond to what Nigel Farage said. Nigel Farage speaking out. It's put the cat amongst the pigeons. Is it helpful? Yes or no? All I'm saying is that I feel that um, he's scared to use those same standards he levels against Muslims, against Jews, for doing exactly the same thing in terms of uh, what you might call what living in, 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 in Golders Green and so on. Would you call that a silo? You wouldn't. You wouldn't dare because you'd be called anti-Semite and you'd, you'd, you'd uh, hate well, that. How many acid attacks well, are in Golders uh, Green? Uh, you said if, if England's the global, the global uh, leader in acid attacks, then, uh, then, then, and it's not the Muslim world, then clearly that it's not got nothing to do with Islam or Muslims. Anyway, anyway, okay, anyway, okay, anyway, as my, as, um, anyway to, please to, address what Nigel. Yeah. Said. Is it helpful or not? I mean, he's speaking so, truth, but... I, well, well, I think we have to ask ourselves, is, is Nigel out for the rights of the British citizen, the rights of the British citizen to protest and demonstrate? No police are injured or attacked every week on the Palestine demonstration of protest. Yeah, and fox hunting, the, the, the demonstrations that he attended, in one case, there was a riot in Parliament Square where 60 police were injured, P uh, MPs were houses were barricaded by fox hunting protesters, right? Uh, Anti-ban uh, uh, anti protesters. Okay. And yes. yet, he supports that. But yeah, peaceful protests go out for Palestine and he wants to clamp down. The question is, does he have Britain's British rights, British citizens' rights in his mind as his number one concern? Right. Does he have Israel or other foreign gents, countries, gents, governments, gents, uh, we have to leave uh, it there. ideas that he wants we, to we uh, have promote? We have to leave it there. All I'll, say, all I'll say in response to that is I, I pleaded with the police to stop people putting that, that sign on Big Ben when it happened from River to the Sea. I said to them, there's a projector, go and take it down. But they what, would not. What's wrong they with soft it? soap it. People find it grossly offensive and many feel it shame. And guess what? Guess what, guess what rights and freedom is all about? Rights and freedom is to, do, to have the freedom to do something even despite people find it grossly offensive. Looks like you guys uh, have issue with British values. Well, it's not a British not, value. Not Muslims. <laughs> not Muslims. Because you're defending you're, freedom and liberty. Because yes, all, all GB News does, it talks about banning this, banning that, perhaps that problem with this, a problem with that, and that they should clamp down on this, on, on the rights of British citizens to protest or demonstrate when there's clearly no anti-Semitism there. Not a single uh, smoking gun you can present on camera. Just rumours. Oh, we hear there's anti-Semitism happening. Not a single, not a single time, not a single image you can show. Okay, so that gas the Jews comment um, was in, in Australia, I believe. It was broadcast. But we're, we're, talking about, we're talking about Britain, but, but anyway, the, yeah. the, But the, the, the children dressed as Hamas terrorists, that was very much in Britain. In fact, and, the police and, posed for pictures with them. We and, have and, that even and there. there were the demonstrators we, attacking, physically attacking, brutalizing yeah. students at UCO in America. We no have, one talks gentlemen, about that. We have to leave it there. Rafe Helmanku and Abdullah Al Andalusi, co founder of the Muslim Debate Initiative. A lively debate. Thank you both very much. Wow. What an interesting debate. You can tell this was really, really heated. Just as the title says, it's not Islamophobic to state horrific facts about many UK Muslim belief and on British value. According to Nigel Farage, some young Muslims do not subscribe to British value. And the Muslim scholar tried to address uh the statement by saying everyone is entitled to their own uh, religious view. Everyone is entitled to their own religious view. And I believe you coming to British, you coming to UK, you have to be able to accept the people culture. You have to be able to accept the people value. You have to be able to accept the people of uh, tradition because I believe a uh, British as a country has its own identity, has its own value, has its own tradition. You don't have to impose uh, your tradition or your culture on the people. You don't have to impose your religious view on the people. You live in, in a country you have to be able to adjust yourself to accommodate uh, the people's uh, value system, to accommodate the people's culture, to accommodate uh, the people's tradition. You don't have to uh, call everything a hate speech. You don't have to resort to violence when you feel people are expressing their freedom of speech or their freedom of expression because... I believe uh, British, uh, British UK as a country 
always emphasize on the freedom of speech, on the freedom of expression. You have no right to be in a community, to be in a country. You have no right to not be offended. There is no way you not be offended. And you don't have to resort uh, to violence because someone is trying to uh, express his freedom of speech and you call it an hate speech. And sometimes you call it an, uh, 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 you, call, you, you, you try to call it Islamophobic because someone tried to express uh, his ideology and you tend to call the person, you tend to say uh, the person is becoming Islamophobic, which I believe we don't need to resort to violence. If uh, you don't agree with something, you have to engage in a dialogue, you have to engage in a debate in order to be able to address the issue. You don't have to resort to violence. And from one of the video I, I've watched before now, Douglas Murray also, Douglas Murray addressed this certain issue. He said the main problem is Islamic uh, fundamentalists and Islamic extremism. They tend to pick offense because people try to express their freedom of speech, their freedom of expression. They tend to pick offense. And I believe you living in a country, there's a need for you to be able to adjust, adjust yourself to be able to accommodate the people's value, the people's culture, the people's tradition. Because I believe all country has its own identity. As we all know, British identity is rooted in its culture. British identity is rooted in its tradition. British identity is rooted in its value system. So you calling yourself a British or you living uh, in UK, there's a need for you to be able to accept the people's uh, culture, the people's uh, tradition, the people's value system. You don't have to impose your own culture. You don't have to impose your own tradition on the people because you are living in their country. So you have to abide by the norms, by the culture, by the tradition, by the values. You don't have to pick offense. And I believe you have no right to not be offended if you are living in a society or you are living uh, uh, in a place whereby uh, two or three people are also living with you. You have no right to not be offended. And you don't have to resort to violence in order to be able to address certain issue. There's a need for you to engage in dialogue. There's a need for you to engage in debate to be able to address this issue. You don't have to pick offense. You don't have to resort to violence just because you believe someone says something against your religion or against the founder of your religion. You don't have to pick offense. Since this uh, 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 th this uh, is a norm in British culture, you have to address it in the right way by engaging in dialogue in order to be able to get uh, a, a, a solution to the problem. And the Muslim scholar stated a fact, which I don't know how true, how true this is. Uh, I don't know how true this is. And from the fact he stated is that uh, the Jews in UK the Jews are uh, living in British, they are given more advantage. There's something like favoritism for the British over the Muslim community. From the fact he has stated, he said, a lot of those things that are accusing the, Mus uh, the Muslim people or the Islam, uh, uh, of uh, a lot of these things that are accusing Islam religion, uh, they are accusing the Muslim people that the Jews people are also doing the same thing and no one is saying something about it. But when it comes to Islam, when it comes to uh, 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 the Muslim people, that uh, they tend to, they tend to, a lot, a, a lot of people will say something against them that the Jews are doing the same thing, and no one is saying anything about it. He mentioned a point that even the Jews, uh, when uh, their country is in fury, they flew back to Israel and they joined the IDF in order to be able to defend their country but if the muslim people are do, uh, if the muslim people do the same thing uh they, they tend to call it uh that the uh, the muslim people or islam they are supporting terrorism hat but when it comes to the jews people that no one says anything no one says anything about it 
But if uh, the Muslim people do uh, the same thing, they tend to uh, they, uh, they tend to uh, condemn the Muslim people that they are supporting terrorism, they are supporting an, uh, an art of terrorism. But when the Jews people decide to leave UK and go to their country to support Israel, to defend their nation, no one says anything about that. I don't know how true this is. I don't know how, how true this is. But from uh, the Muslim scholar point of view, he's trying to say they tend to be favoritism uh, in, in UK because uh, he mentioned a fact that in UK... Uh, the Jews people have their own culture. They have their own culture. They even have their own uh, judicial, judicial system. They have their own courts. But if the Muslim people uh, ten, uh, uh, decide to have something like that, that uh, the British people are going to complain, are going to condemn them, that they are going against the British culture, they are going against the British value, but the Jews are doing the same thing and no one is saying anything about it. So I don't know how true this is from the fact he has stated, but I believe British, British UK as a country, as a nation, is a Christian country. It's a Christian country. So there are some certain uh, things that some people can do that UK might tend to overlook it because uh, uh, it doesn't affect their culture because uh, the British is also a Christian country. And, and I believe if uh, the Muslims tend to do the same thing, the fuels, uh, it affects their culture, it affects their value system, and they talk about uh, fundamentalists, and they talk about Islamic extremism, they try to condemn the Muslim, they try to condemn Islam if they do the same thing. But I want one fact to be noted in this video that though British, UK, has given everyone the freedom to practice whichever religion you want. They have given you freedom to express your freedom of, they have given you the right to express your freedom of speech, your freedom of expression. But you have to note the fact that UK as a country is a Christian country. So there are some certain culture, and there are some certain tradition, there are some certain values that is sacred to them that they don't want you to play with those culture they don't want you to go against those culture. They don't want you to go against those those values, cause British is and and UK is a Christian country. And if you are not okay with the culture, with the value system, with the tradition in UK, I think you can go back to your own country. And I believe in your own country, no one is going to question your action. No one is going to question your behavior. Because those culture, those tradition, those values are, are, are the values of your own country. No one is going to question you for doing anything that uh, is Islamic in nature when you go back to your own country. But you come into another person's country and try to impose your own culture, your own value system on the people. I believe that is totally unacceptable. And Douglas Murray... Sorry, I'm always quoting Douglas Murray. Douglas Murray always talk about this that this is the uh, that the major problem is Islamic uh, fundamentalists and Islamic extremism. That you have no right to not be offended, and you don't have to resort to violence because someone is trying to uh, express uh, his freedom of speech. And I believe. This video is really uh, educative. I get to learn a lot just by listening to the speaker, the Muslim scholar. And I believe you also do. Keep the comments coming. I also like to hear your views on this topic, on this topic which states uh, some young Muslim do not subscribe to British values. I want to know how true this is. Kindly keep the comments coming. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button. Click on the like button. Do have a nice day.